Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about external storage on Parallels. So I've got Parallels installed on my M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And what we want to be able to do is to add storage onto the Windows 11 guest operating system. So I'm just going to show you, I have external storage added to my Mac host already. So this orange icon means that we have um, an, a storage volume added. So this is my two terabyte external solid state drive. This has been formatted to APFS, which is the Apple only formatting. And we have two terabytes here. We have lots of lots of games installed and it's used by both my Mac operating system and also the Windows operating system here which is running in the virtual machine. So if I click on here I can show you how this is mounted exactly. So by default any kind of volume, even shared drives or hard drives attached, will actually appear as a mapped network share drive here. So we have full read and write permission here, and I've got all of my games and uh, everything else that I've got. I kind of separated them out into the way they're accessed so that we, I don't get too confused. But basically, it will map the drive onto a specific letter. This letter can be a bit random based on what drives you have, based on how many drives you have mapped on your Mac operating system. It'll tend to stay persistent as long as you don't rename these volumes. Largely speaking, this is going to be fine for most games. So for example, if you wanted to add games on Steam, we could just go to Steam settings and then go to the download section here and then click on Steam library folders. And then we could just add the X network drive onto there by clicking add folder and then navigating to that X drive here. And then we could just add as an additional place to download Steam games. However, some games don't like this map network drive. They won't let you uh, install onto a map network drive. For example, some Origin games, the Xbox Game Pass games, they want to be installed on the C drive or on a different local network drive that's in this list and not on this list. So the way to do that is to shut down the virtual machine and then uh, make some changes to the control center settings. So it's going to shut down here. And then we'll click on this cog icon. And once the virtual machine shut down, we can make some changes here. So basically what I want to be able to do is add a USB flash drive uh, so that the Windows 11 can detect it correctly and then read and write to it without these network drive issues. So we'll go to the USB and Bluetooth settings and then click USB connection preferences. And this will tell me what to do when a new external device is connected. So basically what you want is to have, make sure that this is turned on, ask me what to do. This list here is a list of devices which I've already assigned to connect to my Mac. So for example, my more one, which is this volume here, is being attached to my Mac. That's working as intended because I'm happy using that as a network drive. Now, once we've made sure that the settings on, we can just turn on the virtual machine again. So what I'm gonna do now is to insert my USB flash drive, which is an NTFS formatted flash drive. And it's basically asking me, do I wanna connect it to the Mac or to the Windows 11 operating system virtual machine? And what I wanna do is insert it into the Windows 11 machine here. This is my USB flash drive, which is called Helen. I'm going to ask it to remember my choice because every time I want the virtual machine to detect this, I want it mounted on the operating system of the virtual machine. And then I'm gonna click this again. And now this is mounted and it's saying it's gone error. That's perfectly fine. I can see here that I've got the Helen USB drive attached here. And this, if I, if I right click and then click properties, I have a standard NTFS flash drive. It's gonna appear as a local drive here and we're gonna have read and write access to it. And so you won't have the same kind of issues that you have with a network drive. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.